Ah, uh, boy. You know, I think some people deserve to be deported. I do. I do. And, and some don't. But we'll explain later who we think deserve to be and who don't. This story right here, this is definitely about someone who does. But <laughs> let's get into the details and see if they really do. Maybe I'm just reading this from the surface. Welcome back to SoFlo TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. This one is called The Face of a Jamaican Gunman that England Cannot Deport. Mm. So, it says here, Home Secretary berates plain mutiny do-gooders who thwarted the removal of a thug that was jailed for blasting away his gun at his rivals in a bloody street war gun, gun battle. They're trying to deport this individual, but so much has happened, he keeps on not getting deported. Here's the full story. A gun-toting Jamaican gangster who opened fire on a busy street in broad daylight again dodged deportation after a mutiny by airline passengers. A mutiny, meaning the airline passengers decided, nope, we're going to stage a protest right here. I don't care if we paid for our tickets and we're on our way to Jamaica on a looking forward to a vacation in the Caribbean. We don't want this man deported. So just like how they hold up placards in the streets and lay their bodies down across the road. So the buses transporting deportees from the holding area over to the tarmac to be loaded to the plane are stopped and cannot. So they have to cancel those flights is the same way they did on this flight stood up took off their seat belts nope i'm not sitting down y'all not taking off with this man take him off the plane i don't know if they were scared that this guy might break loose mid-flight thousands of feet in the air at high altitude and start killing people on the plane i don't know if they just did not want to have a uncomfortable flight because it is said that he was kicking and screaming the minute the plane left the terminal the plane left the terminal you know the you know when you get on the plane and then the plane you hear yeah fasten your seat belts we're getting ready for takeoff in an hour or two we'll be landing in jamaica blah 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 and then the plane goes circling the runway before it lifts into the air this plane was actually taken off already left from the terminal and was running the runway and the people then pull off their seat belt and stood up because brother man here started a big old row he starts screaming and kicking and punching and the guards who were there had to hold him down and they were scuffling and fighting and the people said nope we standing up you not this i didn't pay for this kind of flight so i'm confused as to whether they just did not want that type of activity on their flight i mean if i'm gonna be making a long flight like that I at least want to be comfortable. I paid for my ticket. I want to kick up my feet if I got some leg room. I want to order a drink. I want to eat a meal. It's a long flight from the UK to Jamaica, right? To be on a flight that long with a man kicking and screaming and fighting in the plane that I'm in. And it's not like I could get away and, oh, let me off right here. Let me take the next plane that's coming. You're stuck right there with that. Right. So uh, it's unclear to me whether it was because they wanted him to not be deported or was it because they did not want this type of activity on their flight. Anyways, this newspaper first reported the revolt on a British Airway flight at Gatwick in November of 2023. But the Home Office refused to disclose the identity of the criminal that was involved or details of his conviction. However, Another news entity today revealed that he is 27-year-old gangster Lawrence Morgan, whose appalling criminal record includes two serious gun crimes and a host of hard drugs convictions. He's only 27. Right. Let me say this again. Clarify. The people who I think should be deported are the people who left Jamaica as adults came over to other people's country, whether it be the US, London, England, Canada, wherever, you left as a grown person. You know the runnings in Jamaica. You know life ain't sweet for everybody. Yes, yeah, some people in Jamaica got life really good. Really, really, really good. 
like paradise life. They have money. They have nice house. They live good. They fly out. They fly back in at will. You're not one of them people. You're from the lower half of the bottom half. The lower half of the bottom half. And you get an opportunity to go to a land full of opportunities where you can exercise your right and become somebody. And you foul it up by picking up a gun, joining a gang, doing gangster stuff, tough man things, gunshots, shoot out in the streets. Yeah, those people need to be sent back so somebody else can come use that opportunity to better themselves. Not to mention how it looks on the reputation of the country. Say Jamaica, the country these people are from. Did y'all hear... Uh, this man speak the other day about people coming into the country. I'm talking about orange man. They call him. Uh, he, he, Trump, he basically said they're getting released from prisons. Most of them are criminals or they're getting released from uh, insane asylums. We don't want these people in our country. Right. So the perception of who is coming is already messed up. And then you come and prove them right. Right. Now, the ones I think should not be deported is the people who have managed to live a good life, to not break any laws, even if they're living here illegally. Some people have been living here illegally for uh, 10 years, you know, couldn't get their papers straight. It's not easy to just pick up somebody and get married and get straight like most people tell you it is. And the laws go back and forth depending on who's in power. For instance, Joe Biden comes into power in the U.S., the immigration laws get lapsed so people can breathe easy those who are living here illegally he's only in position for four years or eight years of presidency if he is elected for a second term if he is not and somebody like donald trump takes office guess what your asshole puckers up you go back into hiding you're running and ducking ice agents so the laws are always changing and it's never comfortable you know what i mean so the them are the people and the ones who came as babies and had no damn idea where they're at and grew up thinking oh i'm british until they commit a serious crime in their 20s and the authorities are telling them well <laughs> no you're not you're not british you're jamaican you were born in jamaica my friend and we're sending you back that's when you start bawling like law i don't have nobody in jamaica i've never been to jamaica yeah, those people should not be sent back. They're only going to be a burden on the system and they have no connection to the island. You understand? But grown people who leave the island, come over as adults, knowing already fully what is. If they end up like this, send their ass back. Now back to this story. Last night, Home Secretary James Cleverly furiously cussed out the do-gooders who attempted to block the deportation of some foreign criminals. The vast majority of the British people think convicted, violent thugs should be deported. This is what he told the crowd. My mission is to keep the British people safe. We can't have people like this living amongst us. We must be able to remove these offenders from our country without interference from misguided and ill-informed do-gooders. See, most of these people who are protesting, they actually think they're saving a man who has his wife and his kids. And he's a hard-working man with two children at home and a wife. And he goes to work and comes home every day. And uh, deportation just fell upon him because he probably overstayed. When they don't realize that sometimes when they stage these protests, they're actually staging a protest and stopping the deportation of an individual who either has killed already or who has harmed people in a severe manner, shooting with intent, has been to prison many times for drug offenses, is considered a dangerous individual out in these streets, both by other gangsters and by law enforcement personnel so you know regular people don't even count in that equation but they don't realize that though so a source close to the home secretary indicated that the government is examining new measures to stop passengers who are blocking these deportation flights to speed up the removals this is an outrageous situation they said 
we will be looking at new ways to handle this issue. Now, Morgan's deportation was stopped from a mutiny that was led by Cambridge graduate Hannah Gaffey. Hannah Gaffey, she boasted online that she and other passengers who were on the plane as it was about to take off to take this man back to Jamaica, she got online and said, we just stood up and we took off our seatbelts and we stood up and we refused to sit down before they took off and described receiving advice from Detention Action, a left-wing human rights charity. I guess the left-wing human rights charity instructed them that if ever you're on one of these planes and you see that this was about to take place, just take your seatbelt off and simply stand up. The plane will not take off. You know when you're on a plane, right? And the plane is getting ready to take off and you hear, buckle your seatbelts, everybody strap in, da da da, and we're about to take off. If everybody take their seatbelt off and stands up, that plane is forced to not take off simply by doing that one action right there. Now, they have video cameras, pictures, of this man shooting out live in the streets, like it, it, in the streets of Birmingham, like say he was some, <laughs> like it was a movie, like brother was John Wick. And you know, in the UK, gun crimes are becoming more prevalent now, but it's still not a UK thing per se. It's more knife, cut up, stab up kind of thing they deal with over there still to this day, right? Gun is more an American thing. But the guns are coming out in the UK now for sure, for sure. And guess who has them? Yep, yep. Now, as he was led off the plane, he thanked the protesters for their intervention. The reason why it started in the first place is he was quiet on the plane, seated at the back of the plane with agents around him to escort him. Right when the plane was about to take off, he just started kicking and screaming and punching and bawling out. And of course, the people on the plane were like, yo, what's going on back there? And then they realized, oh, that's one of the people who are being removed. So naturally took their seatbelts off, stood up, said, nope, you're not taking him. And then they had to remove him off the plane. And when they removed him off the plane, he was thanking the people. I thank you. I thank you. But the former Home Secretary, Priti Patel, said last night, foreign national offenders are deported from our country because they have committed serious offenses. They are dangerous and they are violent. Our streets are safer without them being here. And the overwhelming majority of the public supports their removal. Those who intervene to try to stop these criminals being removed are putting the public in the UK at risk and they should face consequences for their ill-advised actions. So now they're trying to think of ways to come up with actual laws that will block these people from protesting at a certain time and stopping these planes from taking off. The revelation of Morgan's identity and shocking criminal record comes after the MOS revealed how gang rapist Yakub Ahmed was finally sent back to Somalia last summer, more than five years after his deportation was messed up by virtue signaling holiday makers on the same flight. They have been trying to get rid of Yakub Ahmed, Ahmed for a long time. But the same thing happened, people protesting, not knowing who they're protesting for, not knowing his background until they actually figure out who he was and what he was charged with. See, some of these protesters, they have good intentions in mind, right? But they really don't want just everybody being saved. But this is where the bad suffers for the good because later on, there are going to be people who need these protesters. And guess what? The protesters won't show up because laws will be in place to stop them from showing up and because 
they simply won't show up because they're going to start thinking, remember the last guy we saved? Remember what his background turned out to be? Let's not do it again. An extraordinary three and a half minute video clip showed passengers erupting into applause as Ahmed was hauled off the Turkish Airlines flight at Heathrow in October of 2018 with one declaring, you're a free man, you're a free man, they were telling him. The botched deportation was followed by years of legal appeals as Ahmed fought tooth and nail to stay in the country. Well, they eventually deported him, deported him from the UK anyways, because they had no intentions of him staying there. Morgan, the Jamaican Morgan, who arrived in the UK from Jamaica on a visitor's visa in the early 2000s, hadn't even sorted out his immigration status. He arrived on a visitor's visa, you know, not on any um, like long stay, anything. A, a typical visitor's visa. Visitor's visas expire pretty quickly. The most they'll probably stamp in your visa is probably six months. And if you check his age, he is 27 and we're in 2023. And he came in the early 2000s. That simply means he came to the UK as a kid. So he was jailed in 2021 after repeatedly firing a gun during a deadly gangland shooting in Birmingham the previous year. Shocking CCT footage, CCTV footage showed him. He was dressed in all black on a bicycle and he was just blasting away at two rival gang members, one of whom had just executed his friend. His friend was Nasir Francis. His friend was 22 years old at the time. And he got executed at point blank range. And as his friend got executed, he pull out his gun and he starts shooting back at them. But here's the thing. Some people are going to say, well, he was defending his friend and they just murdered him. Guess what? They were all criminals, all doing wrong. What the police in the UK are saying is if he wasn't out there packing a gun, selling crack cocaine and heroin, like what they caught him with, then he wouldn't be in this situation in the first place if he was a good youth going to school getting an education or something or learning a trade he wouldn't be out here involved in this so the shocking cct footage tv footage that caught him is not justified at least 13 shots were fired during this terrifying gun battle on this busy street in lazelles with a judge later saying that it was only by luck that no member of the public was hit that day. Now, Morgan is understood to be part of a gang that is affiliated to a gang known as the Fearsome Johnson Crew, the Johnson Crew, whose feud with their rival Burger Bar Boys terrorized inner city Birmingham in the 90s to the 2000s the bloody turf war led to the death in 2003 of two innocent young women Letitia Shakespeare who was 17 years old and Charlene Ellis who were 18 years old at the time and these girls had nothing to do with the drama that was going on they were caught in a crossfire of a drive-by shooting outside of a New Year's party that was taking place in the city. He is said to be a member of one of these gangs. Now last night, Dr. Marcia Shakespeare, Letitia's mother, who was awarded an MBE award for her tireless anti-gun campaigning, said that the Home Office's use of commercial flights to deport offenders clearly is not working and it needs to be reviewed right clearly is not working and needs to be reviewed i said this they're looking for ways to make this thing go smoothly back to your charter flight go back to the charter flight i know it's expensive but as a consumer as somebody who buys my tickets and travel i wouldn't want to be on a plane 
and there's a grown man kicking and screaming or a bunch of them kicking and screaming in the back of the plane let me out let me out you're deporting me you're kidnapping me ah, ah, ah. and they're fighting and kicking and screaming purposely who can sit through that for an entire flight especially a long flight from the uk to jamaica nah man you have to transport these people by themselves that means they can kick and scream however much they want to nobody will be interrupted she said if you are trying to make a stand to say you are deporting someone then do it and do it the right way can't be bunching them up on planes with regular civilians and then when they make a noise uh, and cause a disruption and the people protest because of the disruption you complain which makes sense if someone had committed a crime, they should be punished. And if someone is going to open fire in the streets, they are a danger and they should not be in public with us. The MOS understands that the government has been attempting to kick Morgan out of the country since 2018, only to be faced with a string of human rights challenges from his lawyers. In April last year, of 2023 the home office issued him with formal notification that he was now going to be deported to jamaica finally classifying him as a very high harm foreign offender due to his repeated gun crimes morgan's lawyers however suggested that he would be at risk from criminal gangs if he was sent back to jamaica and that he was in fear of his life. I can tell you what. At 27 years old you send him back to Jamaica. And it looks like gang life is all he knows. He's going to fall right into gang life. He ain't putting down his bad man ways. On, uh, at the airport when he leave the UK. Guns are a lot in Jamaica. They're always looking to recruit. And they're always looking for shooters who have no heart. Or who should I say have the heart to do it. He's demonstrated that he has the heart to do it, right? Sell crack, sell coke, shoot man, uh, run the street, that kind of stuff. So he'll, he'll fall right back into that. And more than likely, he'll become a burden to Jamaica and a, definitely a burden and a hazard to Jamaica's law-abiding taxpaying citizens. I want to say keep him in the UK, man. Now, Morgan who lived in Nettles, Birmingham, is also believed to have claimed a right to family life under the European Convention on Human Rights Act because he has fathered a child there in the UK. He is even said to have claimed that he was a positive role model and that he was doing voluntary work with troubled teenagers. All this he's put in his paperwork while he's out in the streets slanging drugs toting a gun, shooting out in broad daylight. So all this has hampered his case, his deportation case. Home office officials resisted his appeal and on November 10th of 2023, he was finally escorted on board a Boeing 777 British Airways flight to Kingston, Jamaica. But as other passengers took their seats, Morgan began screaming and shouting and kicking and punching get off me get off me get me off of here you're kidnapping me get off me the people on the plane wasn't having it everybody was like yo i want a nice calm flight to jamaica i don't want to be on this but there were some of them on there who were actually human rights activists and they thought this was simply a father being removed from his child and his woman and a family being break broken up so they took their seatbelts off, they stood up on the plane, and they stopped his flight from taking off. What a lucky guy. Writing on X or Twitter, Miss Gaffey, 26, from Salford, Greater Manchester, she described how she and others protested at the injustice of this man's removal despite not knowing why. He was on the plane and being deported. She bragged about it on social media. She and her fellow passengers. We did some justice today, she said. Until they found out his background. 
Now, they're like, uh-oh. The British Airways staff, they were keen for us to sit down and stop talking about it, she wrote. So, we stayed standing. The aircraft is not allowed to take off while people are standing. So, we simply just stood up and refused to sit down. Gaffey and other passengers eventually sat down, but Morgan became increasingly violent, punching and screaming, Get off me! Take me off here! You're kidnapping me! And the British Airways captain abandoned his preparations for takeoff and turned the plane around and returned the aircraft back to the terminal. Now, Miss Gaffey described how she phoned a caseworker at detention action both before and after the mutiny during the second call she was advised that if she found herself on another deportation flight she should just simply refuse to sit down be an activist refuse to sit down at the time detention action director james wilson said that the charity did not advise miss gaffey to stand up he declined to comment further this weekend morgan was taken to brookhouse detention center near gatwick and he is believed to still be in the uk at the moment last night former tory leader leon duncan smith called for morgan to be fast tracked on another deportation flight with no further legal appeals get him the hell up out of our country and do it now when you have big head politicians or big wig politicians that are calling for your deportation like this, you're definitely going to be deported. He, he then said, the Home Office should make sure that the public are aware at the time of the deportation that this guy is an offender who is being deported because of his offenses and that those passengers who protest, they should leave the aircraft, not take the guy off the aircraft but hear what everybody on the aircraft bought their tickets they didn't sign up to fly with people being deported who are going to be screaming for a whole how many hours it takes to get from the uk to jamaica do they not have a right as well to have a quiet flight a safe flight a flight where they feel good imagine being somebody who already has issues with flying your anxiety is going to be off the charts if you are on a plane with somebody who's kicking and screaming and fighting the whole way a male on sunday investigation had established that in february of 2016 morgan then was only 19 years old in 2016 he was only 19 and remember he came to the uk in the early 2000s they said which means he came as a small child i'm thinking morgan is one of those ones that probably should not even be deported in the first place remember i said i think that children who came to the uk under a certain age they should not be deported that is england's problem they were raised in the uk like that that is their criminals keep him rehabilitate him or imprison him there but if you're an adult and you go over there and you commit crimes then by all means send that big grown-ass person back to their country so through an investigation it was established that in february of 2016 he was only 19 he was actually even caught by police carrying a loaded gun and he had drugs crack and cocaine in his bag he was handcuffed but he managed to headbutt the police sergeant in a bid to get away. They scuffled, but they held on to him. He was jailed for five years and 10 months after admitting possession of the firearm and the illegal drugs, crack, heroin, and cocaine, all found in his bag along with his gun. In February of 2017, Morgan received another two-year sentence to run consecutively, not concurrently, consecutively, meaning it's added and you're going to have to do those two 
for supplying more heroin and crack in what police described as a county lines gang operation in Banbury, Oxfordshire. Now, while in jail, Morgan was one of the 18 men that were named in a landmark legal ruling to be the largest group injunction that ever secured against gang members in the UK. The two-year order aimed to disrupt an outbreak of violence between the Burger Boys or the Burger Bar Boys and another crew called the Johnson Crew, barring gang members from associating with each other. Morgan is believed to have been a member of the GMG, Guns and Money Gang, which affiliates itself with the Johnson Crew. The Johnson Crew is one of those crews who were involved in the shootout that caused the death of two young women. By 2020, he was 24 years old. Morgan was back on Birmingham streets, so he got locked up at 19. And by the time 2024 came, he was back on the streets, right? And once again, he went right back into his gang life and gang violence. At lunchtime on August 26 that year, he and fellow GMG member Nasir Francis pulled up outside a row of shops, a row of shops in Lazils in a white Lexus. They were spotted rival gang members Tico Le, then 17, and Darnell Donovan Harris, then 22 years old. Morgan, which is the Jamaican, and Francis, who recorded violent drill music under the name krill jumped into the passenger and into the passing car of an associate drove to an address where they collected a gun and within minutes they returned back to the scene after they had seen what they called the ops chilling cct footage cctv footage showed morgan arriving by a bicycle firing at his rivals lay was also armed and he was shooting back prompting morgan to cycle off and francis to leap into the lexus as lay and donovan harris chased morgan they spotted francis sitting in the driver's seat opened the door and started punching him lay then opened fire again blasting francis at point blank range and leaving him with multiple gunshot wounds in the stomach so in other words for those who are confused it was him and his friend who started this beef saw somebody who they thought were their ops and jump in our car went around the corner grabbed a gun came back start shooting but the person was armed and the person had other people with them who was armed as well. So the person shot back. And it was so much shooting back going on. He was on a bicycle and he had to ride away. He rode away and left his friend. His friend jumped in the Lexus to hide. And as they were running after him who was on the bicycle. Morgan the one they were trying to deport. They looked over and saw his friend sitting in the car. It looked like he had been shot already. So they opened the car door and they start beating him and they then at point blank range shot him multiple times in his stomach all this was caught on video the extraordinary video footage then showed morgan advancing towards lay and donovan harris and shooting the flash of the gun clearly visible as he held it in both outstretched hands so he turned around his bicycle when he realized that they had got on his homie and his homie wasn't getting away and he came back firing to save his homie morgan fled with the mortally injured francis in the lexus before callously abandoning his dying friend in a nearby street this is what a jury was later told he pushed him out the car man you dead um, I ain't taking you to no hospital because I don't want police grab me at the hospital, right? So he pushed his friend out the car. Morgan admitted, though, to, to possessing a firearm 
and he received another sentence of five years imprisonment, but he beat an actual murder case. The prosecution blamed him for being liable for his friend's death, but a jury acquitted him of murder and attempted murder. So you see the kind of stuff that this brother is getting into? Lay, who was convicted of murder, attempted murder, and possession of a firearm with intent, was jailed for a minimum of 20 years, while Donovan Harris was jailed for 18 years after being convicted of manslaughter and possession of a firearm. These are the guys that they were fighting with. These are the guys that killed his friend. They actually caught them too because everything was caught on tape. Sentencing Lee, Mr. Justice Saini said, this that you did, that was an execution because they opened the car door and he was stuck in the car and they beat him down first and then they shot him at point blank range. The judge said this was an execution. It is only by luck that no innocent members of the public who were passing by in this busy area of Birmingham at lunchtime in broad daylight were not also shot. Miss Gaffey, who stood up on the plane and caused others to stand up with her and caused the plane to turn around and therefore caused Morgan to not be deported. When she was told of all this and it was revealed who it is she saved from being deported, she had nothing to say. Hmm. Leave your comments in the comment section below. I'll catch you on the next video. Tell me what you think about deportation and tell me what you think particularly about this case. Deport him or keep him in the UK. I'm out. Peace.